are not petty, but we love talking about it. Yes, we do. I'm Andrew, as always. I'm Kate. You're supposed to say, as always. <laughs> I was going to say, sometimes. That would have been better. Sorry for just saying my name. So boring today. Mm-hmm. All right, we've got a nuclear revenge story. Ooh, nuclear revenge. I know sometimes it's controversial for you. You don't yes. always think it's nu- nuclear. And I'm going to preface, I don't know if this is completely nuclear, mm-hmm. but there's too many funny things in here to not talk about it. Okay. All right, so the username is almost fungible. I like it. Must be big into NFTs. Oh my God. I almost said, what is that? <laughs> then I remembered. Go back and listen to another episode. You might get absolutely zero details about what they are mm. with my great explanation. Now, I want to say this user is very helpful because they set up the whole, like they give us the setting, the target, aggra- everything. They like lay the it all out. Story. They lay it all out before we even get into the story. I like it. All right. So the setting is a high volume independent tire shop in northern New England circa 2012. Wait, say it again. A high volume independent tire shop. Tire shop. Okay. Yes. And we'll call it one, two, three tire. One, two, three tire. The target. So you only get three tires? You yes. go in in your car, you leave only three tires. You better hope that your fourth one, one is good. One tire is gone, not one, two, three, four tire. You either walk out with three tires or your fourth one better be amazing and just hold up to the other three. Okay. Got it. All right. That's the setting. Target is an evil general manager. And we're going to call him Jay. Okay. Jay is his name here in the story. Aggrieved parties. Basically everybody that worked there at the time, but mainly myself and the receptionist, we'll call her Ruth. Got it. All right. So we've got the general manager, the aggrieved parties, and the setting. Okay. Let's hear what Jay and Ruth go through. All right. So the backstory. So Jay had been the GM of 123 Tire since he got the previous GM fired in 2004. So eight years. He was and is a complete narcissist who believed he could do no wrong. And if you didn't agree with him, God help you. Hmm. And he got the old yes. GM fired. So. so nobody immediately likes him. Yeah. He's, so that, he's that got that reputation. gave him a little bit of an ego. Yes. Right. So over the years, Jay had done a number of illegal things. For example, he was always very physical with his employees. One t- <laughs> I couldn't read this without laughing. One time he was wrestling with another salesman. I can't even get past the line. Why would you wrestle with? I, I can say in all of my years of working, I've never wrestled anyone at work. And I used to work with my family. I thought I was going to be able to get through this, but I couldn't. This And then he has in parentheses, this was commonplace and unavoidable, unavoidable if you valued your job. To wrestle? Uh, apparently. <laughs> Have you ever wrestled anybody at any of your jobs? I wish I had, but no. The heck? And the salesman, we'll call him Paul, took a bad fall and broke his knee. In order to avoid the ire of the owner, we'll call him Lou. So Lou is the owner of 123 Tire. Okay. Jay's the GM that likes to wrestle people. Mm -hmm, I got it. Okay. Jay immediately clocked Paul out and told him to go to the hospital. He also told Paul to use his own insurance and that the company would pay the deductible in order to avoid a messy workers comp claim. Paul did as he was told and kept his job, but his knee was never the same and he ended up addicted to opioids thanks to Jay's actions. That is so illegal. A hundred percent. You cannot tell somebody to not put a workers comp claim in. Well, Jay did it. And I'm guessing if he put the workers comp claim in, he probably would have wrestled him. Be like, if I win, this goes away. That's so stupid. This next one's going to be a shocker. Wait, and this was in 2014? 2012. 2012. What in the world is happening here? <laughs> it's in New England. So obviously people like to wrestle and put in fake workers comp claims. I guess. And you, this next one is, line is probably going to shock you knowing that this guy likes to wrestle people. Jay also had an affinity for the ladies. What? <laughs> I am shocked. But here's the twist. Now, I must mention that Jay is an ultra, quote, conservative Christian father of 11 children. Of course he is. Of course. 
He is. 11 children. Yes. 11. And he's a conservative Christian. Got it. More than 10. He's got 11. Yeah, got it. Not even one for each finger on his hand. 11. Got to make them babies. Christian, conservative Christian father of 11 children who believes that a woman place is uneducated, barefoot, pregnant, and in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Duh. I mean, who doesn't think that? Especially in 2012 up to now. Ugh. That being said, several female receptionists came and went over the years with only Ruth sticking around because she needed the money and begrudgingly accepted the regular sexual harassment. When he wasn't behaving inappropriately with every lady that walked in the door, he was behaving inappropriately with every other employee. Want to leave early on a slow day? Guess what you have to do. Oh my God, wrestle him. Wrestle the biggest guy in the shop for it. Not even him. He calls out the biggest guy that's oh working God. and says he wants to leave early. Wrestle him. <laughs> what is going on? Jay was big on wrestling. I suspected Jay may have also been wrestling with his daughters, but couldn't prove it. The guy was a real creep. Big guy isn't in that day. Buy him a pizza. Trying to have lunch? Give me a second. <laughs> so imagine you want to go to lunch. Jay but walk- don't, so just a normal, like this is just a normal day. Most people go and eat lunch, but you want to eat lunch in this. You have to do something for it. Trying to have lunch? Expect Jay to throw food at you. <laughs> do they? Okay. <laughs> Is he really like a 12-year-old boy? And they just don't. He's been this ruse since he was like, I don't know, four. (laughs) I don't know. Because he's been there for eight years. Hey, I'm going to lunch now. I just imagine Jay sitting at his desk eating and be like, hey, you don't need to go to lunch. And I'm assuming it's spaghetti. I don't know why, (laughs) but he's eating spaghetti because he's childish. So he grabs a handful and throws spaghetti. Got it. (sighs) Jay. Want to schedule a vacation? Tough. He'll let you know the week before if you can take it. And funny enough, he says he was a complete child and I put up with him for six long years because I couldn't let him win. Would you quit this job or would you do everything you could like him to not let him win? Uh, He would be in my crosshairs and I would do everything in my power to make sure that he got fired. I mean, quitting is almost not even fun at this point. I mean, I would have reported him just for that workers' comp thing. Because you can report to the labor board. That's why they're there. Probably wrestled you for your silence. (laughs) I would have won. All right. So now we're in the setting. It was the summer of 2012 and Ruth and I had had enough. Jay was completely out of control as usual. Now telling me, a Latino, this next sentence is going to shock you. What? That if Obama won re-election, that he would make my work life hell come November. Thanks, Obama. Classic conservative (laughs) Christian. Ruth was going through a divorce, and he was trying to move in on her. For the record, Ruth hated Jay's guts. It was time to hit him where it hurt. Ruth was ready to drop a lawsuit for sexual harassment on Jay and 123 Tire, and I was ready to drop one for constructive discharge. Now, suing an employer doesn't exactly look good on one's CV, but we were both at wit's end. The Revenge Ruth and I decided one evening that Jay's ultra-conservative values must be shared by his wife and family. As he was always working, his wife must be the one who goes to the mailbox every day. I created a throwaway email and got him a Bill Me Later subscription to Hustler Magazine and Playboy and Penthouse. Nice. Went for the trifecta. Fast forward a couple weeks, and he comes in looking like death warmed over. Turns out, Mrs. J didn't appreciate his new taste in reading material, and he's now living in a motel in the next town over. Now, he's not saying that his wife kicked him out. He's far too much of a narcissist for that, but I could put two and two together. He's decided that he's done with his wife and 11 children, and that he's going to start a new life with Ruth. After all, her divorce is going to be finalized at the end of the week. So he's excited for that. What indication has Ruth given this person? <laughs> Apparently nothing, because he said multiple times that nobody there likes him. But maybe because she's stayed there so long to put up with it, he's like, oh, she must love me. Oh, yeah, because, you know, if you're... Everyone loves a 12-year-old. Yes. And if you're silent about sexual harassment, you love it. Absolutely. The next morning, Lou called Jay to his office. Wait, my 
too far ahead? No. Yes, I went too far ahead. My apologies. Mm-mm-mm. All right, so her divorce was going to be finalized. It was at this point that Lou's sister, who is the co-owner of 123 Tire and not a big fan of Jay, we'll call her Liz, overheard him talking to Ruth in a less than business appropriate manner. Liz later took Ruth aside and got the straight poop on what had been happening for the last several years, and that was that. I'm starting... I almost want to say that these names probably aren't made up. I'm hoping that these are the real names. I think that they have to be made up. I'm going with the real. Okay. The next morning, Lou called Jay to his office and was far kinder than I would have been. Jay was to lose his title of GM and go work in another 123 tire location an hour away until the end of the year. Beginning in 2013, Jay would need to find other employment. Jay was also not to contact the location that he had overseen and worked in for years. Also, the location that Jay was relocated to added an hour to his already hour-long commute. I suspect that Lou also encouraged Jay to reconcile with his wife, which Jay did. Hmm. That's a, well, like, it's an odd thing that your boss says, hey, you need to get back together with your wife. I mean, I'm sure you just suggested Maybe it. they were friends. I, I don't know. I'm an... If he's acting the way that he is, they were definitely friends. Are you kidding me? He got away with what he was doing because they were friends. Yeah, because it doesn't seem like he got involved until his sister started finding out about things. Yeah. So they probably have very similar worldviews. He gave them that long. You don't do that for somebody who's not your friend. And just send them an hour away working for the same company. Yeah. No, that's that's a load of crap. He should have lost his job. For sure. But there's an epilogue. I don't know if we've ever had an epilogue, an official one. (laughs) Jay ended his employment with 123 Tire in January of 2013 and never suspected any involvement from me. In fact, to this day, he stays in occasional contact with me. He went to work for another tire store, this one a corporate chain as a store manager, put his house on the market, bought a new one closer to his new employer and everything. A year later, he was fired after bringing a seven-figure lawsuit on them. They settled out of court, and he moved back to the house he was in before as it hadn't sold. Jay's next job was five minutes from his home, and his new boss was the guy that Jay had gotten fired back in 2004. How that worked out, I don't know. Yeah, how did he get... Well, so it had to have been a corporation, and then he ended up going to to where that... (laughs) So the boss he got fired is now his boss again. That one lasted a couple of years until Jay gave up on finding employment in the area and moved himself and the whole family to the Midwest sometime around 2016. Now in the Midwest, Jay has been unable to keep a job in the car business for more than a year, and as soon as each of his kids turn 18, they seem to move right back to the area they grew up in. That's shocking that his kids don't want to be around him. What? That is weird. That was probably the biggest surprise of this whole story. His New England home sold in 2019 for less than he bought it for, Ruth still works for 123 Tire and is very happy there now. The icing on the cake. Epilogue and icing. In early 2021, I finally left my job at 123 Tire, sold my house, and became a full-time RVer. I've seen 47 U.S. states, including the Midwestern state and town that Jay now resides in. I looked him up when I got there, and he came to see me after he got out of work in my new RV. He said, boy, you must really think something of me to look me up and want to see me all the way out here. If only he knew the half of it. <laughs> He's, it's more of like, I want to see how your life has imploded. Curiosity. And then the TLDR at the end got my tyrant ultra conservative boss fired by sending him dirty magazines at his expense. So we could have just had this in 30 seconds and been done. No, the story is good. So the revenge also was kind of childish. Yeah, sometimes you got to sink to that level to get the person. I don't think he would have gotten it if he didn't sink to that level. Yeah. But the whole story itself with wrestling people, I couldn't let that one go. It's just so weird that like just all of his actions are there's so many things that they could have used to report him. I don't so they, even... there's no way I'm I'm surprised that it didn't say anywhere in there that the owner and Jay were friends. That Lou and Jay were friends because there's no way they were not friends. Yeah, they had to have been. I don't it took Liz to get him out of there. Could you imagine, though, any of your bosses coming up, hey, we're wrestling today? No, if anyone did that, I would be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. 
That's not happening. I would have laughed in their faces. No, I'm serious. We're wrestling. Yeah, I still would be laughing. Oh, and by the way, every episode we do now, we're starting off with a wrestling match. <laughs> uh, well, I'm like twice your size, so I'll take you down. I don't know why you it's would probably even... not going to be a fair match. But... No, no, it would not be fair at all. That's my story. Wrestling Jay. Nice. And his 11 children. Well, I don't. I don't think it was a nuclear revenge, but it was the way she went about it was subtle enough for, like she said, where it's not her. It was a guy. Or I'm sorry, uh, him to get caught. So he took. You got to wonder where they all came from out of nowhere, though. Well, okay, so this is my thought. Mm -hmm. I feel like because of how he was a chauvinist and was acting around other women. This is an issue that has come up in their marriage many times. And I guarantee you, he has been caught either watching porn or doing something that he should not be doing with somebody else, like some woman. And that he, yeah. And like, and then these show up and then he's like, no, I swear I didn't have anything to do with it. So of course you're not going to believe him. Oh, okay. Okay. Because even if he's like, well, why would I have him sent to my house? Okay, well, what if something happened? Like, there's a mix up or whatever. Like, I'm not going to send you. him to one, two, three tire and send yeah. him to the house instead. And they went to the house instead because it went to your billing address or something like that. Who knows? So, like, of course, she's not going to believe him. And that was the that was it. Like, I've given you 11 children. Get out. And then I'm going to go to work and tell everyone that I decided to leave. Yeah. Well, because you got to save face. Classic J. That's pretty funny. So that's all. Well, that's that good. is my story. Not the best, but very childish and easy to laugh at. Very childish. The wrestling is the best part. Well, and throwing food at people. <laughs> so weird. How, how crazy of a story is that, that throwing food at people when they want to eat is only the second most ridiculous yeah. thing that this person does? <laughs> Uh, I mean, it'd be a story if I came home. Hey, today I went to work and I was telling my boss, hey, I'm going to go eat lunch. And he just looked up from his desk and threw food at me. <laughs> okay. And that was after I told you when I got there, we were wrestling to see who had to do the most work. Yeah. And the loser had to do the most work today. That's you wouldn't even have heard that idea. You wouldn't even have heard the fact that I told you that we I had food thrown at me. No. That would be a secondary. <laughs> I'd ask you a few days it. later, can you believe he threw food at me? He threw food Wh- at you what? too? When did that happen? <laughs> so stupid. Thanks, Jay. Uh, it was good. I like it. I don't approve of you, but I approve of letting us laugh at you. And poor Ruth never got the life she dreamed of with him. <laughs> She's so the real loser in all this. <laughs> so weird that... Okay, so I'm I'm thinking with that situation... She obviously, like, not catered to him, but she allowed, she probably allowed certain things just because she didn't feel like going to look for another job. Yeah. She probably made decent money and it was a schedule she needed or something like that. And so she had to put up with it. And the fact that he took her just putting up with the actions is, oh, she's going to start a new life with me. It's just also very comical in his thought process. Yeah, she was probably the first one that didn't resist too much. And She like, loves me. Eureka, it's success. <laughs> Finally, after all these times. And he definitely said Eureka. <laughs> he wouldn't even know what that word means. Probably not. Not for a 12-year-old. All right, well, that was a good story. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. I worked really hard to write that one up. <laughs> you didn't even have to write it. it was, that's the best part of it. It is. So come back next week. Kate will have another petty story for us. Yes, I will. No, she's got at least a couple. Yes, I do. So in the meantime, you can go to our website, letstalkpetty.com, and you can listen to older episodes. We're almost ready to start season two. We're getting there. And our full episodes will be back. Yes, they will. Check, Check on our Twitter, Let's Talk Petty Pod, and you'll definitely get an updated date then and get quick notification when it's coming out yep so thanks for listening we'll talk to you next week bye
Thanks for listening. Please be sure and give our show a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And be sure to follow and subscribe so you don't miss an episode.